church. Let's try it again. Good morning, church. As you know, our God is alive and well. Amen. <laughs> Please say this with me. Our God's not dead. We can do better. Our God's not dead. Our God's not dead. rise and worship with us. Let love explode and bring the dead to life. A love so bold to see a revolution somehow. Let love explode and bring the dead to life. A love so bold to see a revolution somehow. Now I'm lost in your freedom. Oh, this world I've overcome. My God's not dead. He's surely He's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. My God's not dead. He's surely alive. He's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. Roaring, roaring. He's roaring, roaring. He's roaring like a lion. He's roaring, roaring. He's roaring, roaring. He's roaring like a lion. Let hope, let hope arise and make the darkness hide. need a resurrection somehow now I'm lost in your freedom oh this world I've overcome my God's not dead he's surely alive he's living on the inside roaring like a lion my God's not dead he's surely alive he's living on the inside Roaring like a lion, roaring. He's roaring. He's roaring like a lion. He's roaring. 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 Let every roar and fire fall. Come shake the ground with the sound of revival. Let heaven roar and fire fall. Surely alive, he's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. My God's not dead. He's surely alive, he's living on the inside, roaring like a lion, roaring. He's roaring, he's roaring like a lion. He's roaring, 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 like a lion. Amen. Our God is definitely not dead. Amen. One, two, three, four. Come on, clap your hands. Who breaks the power? of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is a 
like singing songs straight out of the Bible, right? This one's called Nothing Could Ever Separate Us. Nothing can separate us from God. And you know why? Because Romans 8, 38 and 39 says, I don't have my right contacts on today. <laughs> but Romans 8, 38, 39, for I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. One, two, three, four. No ocean, no valley, no mountain too high. No power on earth, there's no distance too wide. No high, no, no death could keep me from your love. No failure, no weakness, no doubt in my mind. No prison around me could keep me alive. Not even death can pull me from your arms. Never could separate us, nothing ever could separate us, nothing ever could separate us now. And when 
when I can't see you, you're still know you're here. And when I can't feel you, your promise is clear. Nothing I face can keep me from your love. My Savior, my healer, my life and my home. My treasure forever, with you I belong. And even in death, we won't be torn apart. Nothing ever can separate us. Nothing ever could separate us. Nothing ever could separate us. so much. Savior's 
boat and they see a man come up to them on the shore and they think it's a ghost but then it hits them it's Jesus and Peter doubting says if you are Jesus command me to come out to you and Jesus said come so Peter began to walk on the water but then he feels but then he felt the wind and he begins to sink and he cries out to Jesus Jesus save me and Jesus grabbed him and pulled him ashore and Jesus looked at him, you of little faith, why would you doubt me? And we go through this every day with little trials and tribulations. We doubt in Jesus when all we have to do is just stand there and know that he's with us. He may let us sink, but he'll never let us drown. Oh, 
talk about this song a little bit. The song's asking God to, t- to take you to places where your faith will grow. And everybody wants the blessing. We all want the happy, happy, joy, joy, but it's the breaking we need. There's breaking going on all over Texas and Houston, San Antonio and Dallas and all over our country right now. We have to lift the weight to get stronger. If we lift the weight together, we'll all be stronger in Christ. So let's lift that heavy weight. I pray for us all today to become stronger and help others the way that we know we can. And this church is so awesome at. Right now, I'll turn it over to Pastor Eddie and and just lift him up with the Holy Spirit coming through. It's just in his sermon. I love you all. Amen. Amen. Well, hello, New Hope. Love you guys. Well, I can hear you guys sing from up here, man. He is worthy of our praise, is he not? Woo! Come on, give him a shout of praise, because he is worthy. Well, listen, do me a favor. Share that love with somebody else. Turn around, greet someone, say hello. Invite somebody out to lunch. Make a friend. You guys are awesome, awesome, awesome. If you're in middle school, middle school or high school, just you can stand up right now and head off to class. There's Anthony in the back. Awesome. Wow, you guys are such a friendly group of people. Praise the Lord. That's the Spirit of God in our midst. Amen. Well, let me welcome everyone and uh, especially our first-time guest and returning guest. And I, I want our first-time guests to know how New Hope is a place for imperfect people to belong, to grow, to serve, and to find healing and hope. And we do that by loving Jesus, loving people, and serving our city and the world. And uh, I am absolutely convinced that that is probably more desperately needed uh, as we're going to continue to move forward, Uh, not only in our own personal lives, uh, but uh, as a community of faith and as a nation. And um, I tell you, there is just some, uh, some real deep soul searching that uh, we're going to do. Last night, we had a, just a, an amazing, powerful time and encounter with God. I'm, uh, I'm believing God and expecting God uh, for the same today. And uh, uh, let me just uh, <clears throat> quickly just ask you, if you wouldn't mind pulling out this weekend program. If you don't have one, just please raise your hand. Raise your hand, and we'll get you one. Uh, right here, uh, one of our ushers uh, in this corner here. Thank you. Okay, great. Anyone else? 
right here in the middle. Anybody have a bulletin? There you go. Just keep your hand up. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Right? Oh, okay. She got one? Okay, great. Thank you. Well, listen, let me just say thank you to you guys. You guys are absolutely fantastic and fabulous. Um, I tell you, it is amazing as we're seeing so many of you pick up the call and to make grace visible. And uh, yesterday morning, a whole team of you got together. And uh, what does it look like to, to go out and to, to serve those who are needy, and those who are struggling, those who uh, um, are homeless? And we had our homeless outreach uh, this mor- uh, yesterday morning. And uh, we a full meal. You guys cooked a full meal and free uh, clothing. We have tables and tables of clothing and free haircuts and bread and pastries and, and bags of food and just loving on our community, I tell you, in the hot, blistering sun, no less. And uh, you guys are just absolutely fabulous. I, there's no doubt in my mind of the impact that that has. And uh, what amazes me is, is so many of the little children that come um, and uh, so many families that are uh, really doing without. And, um, and at the same time as that's going on, another team of you guys and uh, our trustees and, and all the servant leaders that, that, that came out uh, were, were uh, working on the modulars and they were cleaning and painting and we had people inside getting them all ready and, and uh, teams of people taking doors out and making them fit. I mean, just amazing, uh, amazing. You guys are awesome because I'm going to tell you something. It matters. It matters. And uh, one of the great things, I think, is what does it look like for us, we look at the gospel, is that we would be great neighbors. And someone who's a, who's a good neighbor, you know, make sure that when, when they consider the needs of those around us, our other neighbors. And so we go to great lengths, and I know it takes a tremendous amount of effort you know, to keep these facilities up and running and, 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 and mowed and grass and trimmed and lights on and buildings and, oh, my, it's endless. It's absolutely endless. And uh, we want this location to look very nice for our neighbors. We want them to drive by and say, wow, these people care about the neighborhood and the people who live here. You know, what, what, what we do communicates a lot more than I believe what we say. And uh, I want to thank you guys for all who volunteered and who have a heart to volunteer. And let me just say that, if you're saying, wow, you know, those are some nice things I'd like to get involved. Thank you, sweetie. That's my lovely girl right there. Um, if you wouldn't mind just quickly pulling out this pink connection card. And you're saying, well, how, Eddie, how can I get involved? How can I serve? This is the first step. If you're interested, listen, I want to use my gifts. I want to use my talents. I want to, I want to figure out how I can plug in. And uh, send me uh, just a name, email, whatever you feel comfortable there. And uh, there's pens right in front of you in those little pouches in front of the, uh, the chairs there. Um, and you can just take a moment and fill that out, whether you're first-time guests or sec- uh, uh, are, are regular, because uh, many times we don't really have all the information correct. Sometimes it's just hard for us to read your Greek and Aramaic, and so you know we ask you to write that over for us, and that'd be awesome. And uh, there's opportunities there to serve as well and, and, and attend. We have a, a movies night out, free movies night out. Listen, invite your friends. We're gonna have free popcorn and and a free movie here, and there's, there's inserts in the, in the weekend program. Also, there's a Discover Your Place. Let me just encourage you to say, okay, well, how do I get to understand about New Hope and where we're going and, and who the people and the leaders are where I can connect? This is, this is a second thing for you to be able to connect here at New Hope and say, listen, attend the Discover Your Place. We're going to give you a free meal. If you have children, say, well, I don't know if I have time to go because I have children. If you let us know, we'll work out child care for you here. But you've got to let us know. Thus, you, know, you can just show up, but if you show up with your kids and then let us know, we won't have anything ready. And so uh, please just take a moment, fill that out, let us know, and uh, we'd love to come alongside uh, those uh, as well as our baptism at the beach and uh, sunset at the beach and baptism as well. If you've given your life to Jesus and made a profession of faith and never got water baptized, this is great. We go to the Gulf and do that and watch the sunset. It's a great time of fellowship. Uh, and uh, there's a ladies' lunch there. There's opportunities to serve. Let me also say that make a big thing is on the back of this connection card, prayer request. Uh, listen, we want to pray with you. We want to come alongside you in the circumstances that you're in. We want you to know that you're not alone here. We're a family, and, and by the grace of God, uh, not a perfect family, but uh, we're a family nonetheless in Christ, 
and uh, God's going to show us mercy and grace. And every Monday night, our staff gets together, and I and your other pastor leaders, we pray over every single one of these requests. And then when we're done, we hand them over to our prayer warriors, and they pray over them. So I can't encourage you enough. Fill that out. Put that in the offering box. You're going to see there. Uh, that would be great, and uh, they'll make sure they'll come to us. And let me just quickly say about the offering. Um, there's not going to be a plate passed by or anything like that. Uh, primarily because we believe what the scripture teaches us that ultimately is for those of us who have given our lives to Jesus and believe that this is our family home. This is our community of faith. And so uh, God puts it on our heart to give. If you're a first time guest or you're here, you know, and you're like, please, we pray you have an encounter with God. Don't, don't, uh, don't feel any obligation. If the Lord's tugging on your heart, then obey the Lord. Of course, that's what I tell you. Uh, but ultimately, we believe that the offering is for those who believe and believe this to be their home, their family, uh, their church family. And so uh, you can just, anytime during the service or after service, just feel free, whatever the Lord puts on your heart. Amen? Well, I'm going to invite a few people to come up forward, if they wouldn't mind. Uh, uh, Patricia, would you mind? Warford, come up, please. Uh, Lee Johnson, please come. Uh, Steve Willett, please come forward. Victoria Willett, please come forward. Josie Kubachati. Did I say that right? I don't know, I did it close. Huh? Not bad. Uh, Tim Unquist. Good. Joni Morrison. Excellent, excellent. Well, let me. Um, uh, yeah, it's okay. Mama, Mama want to stand there? That's okay. Yeah. At 95 years of age, she could do what she wants, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So it doesn't matter whether, whether you're, 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 you are young or mature, okay, God uses everyone. And uh, I tell you, right now before me, this, this is our, uh, our senior adult uh, ministry team. And uh, they go to retirement homes and uh, uh, to, to go and visit the seniors who were there, uh, and they've been pretty much left there m many times, you know, most of their families up north, or many of their family have passed away, uh, and really the, the, the one time, the two times they get an opportunity to have someone come in and visit them, I believe is this team right here, who puts aside their their agenda to go, they, oh, I, they could go to the beach, they could go to Disney, they can go wherever they are, but they desire to go. And uh, with, uh, with worship and kindness and um, just a, uh, an opportunity to love on them and, and share the Bible and, and let them know that they're valuable uh, to us and, uh, because they're ultimately valuable to God. And uh, so this, this team goes a great lens to make grace visible to our seniors uh, in our community and, uh, and so we just want to acknowledge that. And so this team has got our, our Gold Star Award for the month. And so we like recognizing teams that are out there making a difference and making grace visible. And so Patricia, thank you. Lee, awesome. Steve, Victoria, Josie, Tim, and Joni. Let's give them a <laughs> woo -hoo! Thank you, guys. Love you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, where are my little guys? Woohoo! Come on, here are my girls, huh? My girls. How are you? How are you? Huh? Good job. Wow. Come on. Oh my lord. I tell you, last night the stage was full. This morning the stage is full. I tell you, the grace of God is just amazing. It's awesome to see how God keeps on bringing the increase. It's amazing. Well, listen, we, we, uh, we love children here. And um, one of the amazing things that we see throughout Scripture is how the Bible puts an emphasis on us not hindering the little ones from coming to God. And uh, we see that in the life of Jesus and the disciples. Uh, Jesus went out of his way to bless them and to pray for them. And um, matter of fact, the beauty is that he says that we should come to God like little children. 
uh, surrendered and abandoned and uh, open to know that, that in the Father's hands and Jesus' hands that they are secure. And uh, we're, we're, gonna, we're grateful for them. We're grateful for the parents. And so symbolically, just, if you wouldn't mind extending your hand, we're just going to pray for the children as they go off to their children's classes. Father, thank you, Lord, for these children. Thank you what a gift they are. Father, children are a gift from the Lord, and they're a blessing. And Father, I thank you for the opportunity, Lord, for, for the families, Lord. Thank you for the families who brought the children. Thank you, Lord, for all the servant volunteers and leaders, Lord, that prepared lessons all week long. Father, not only in the children's ministry, but in our youth, middle and high school. And Father, bless them, Father. Um, uh, Anthony and Kiza, Lord, and their team over there. Bless them, Father. Bless Amy and her team, Father. Just continue, Lord, to use them as they, they invest in these children, that they would have a strong foundation in God and that they would walk with him all the days of life. And that is where they're going to find their deep joy and deep peace. And we thank you, Lord, for that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, we love you, sweetie. You know, this weekend, uh, there was just so much brokenness in our world. And there is so much hatred and so much violence, so much pain, so much suffering, so much sickness. Um, that video just gave a, a taste of, of all the pain and hurt and sorrow and sickness that's in the world. And um, this weekend, we were supposed to kick off our God on Film, our summer series that we do. And, you know, with all that's happening around our country and the pain and the, the hurt, uh, the division that is now uh, between families and cultures, and uh, there's so much distrust that uh, I, I just felt compelled by the Lord that we need to pray, and we need to hear his voice. There are just so many voices out there, so many opinions, and we need to hear God's voice. 
not all the opinions, not all the social media, not all the political ranking that's going on, not only all the, 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 all the news and such and such, and oh my God, it is just absolutely overwhelming. And in the midst of that, people are still in pain, people are still suffering, people are still dying. And I just, I was just broken. I, I don't really have, I'm not really having any sermon today. I have nothing really prepared. I just wanted to talk. And I wanted us to, to pray. And I wanted us to go before a holy God because there are those moments, I believe, our generation and our time is so desperate and in so in need that it is the time for the body of Christ to rise. To rise and to awaken to the call that God has given you and me as believers. That you and I have the opportunity and the power from God himself through the Holy Spirit to build bridges and not walls. And I just wanted us to spend some time in scripture and do some soaping and so um, and soaping uh, we've been doing over the last few months is pretty much we take a passive scripture and we all kind of participate and, and, uh, and so you're going to need, what you're going to need is a Bible. So if you don't have a Bible, if you have a tablet or a cell phone, you can just take one out. And if you don't have a Bible, just raise your hand. We'd love to give you a Bible. We have plenty of Bibles. Just raise your hand. You can keep it uh, if you don't have one. And um, there's one, yeah, that's in the front. Uh, here on the side, we'll get some more. They're coming back. Just, uh, yeah, just keep the hand up. And uh, if you get some more rushes to help out with the handing out the Bibles, that'd be great. Thank you. There's also, you're going to need not only the Bible, but a, a, a pen. And, um, good. Yeah, right there. Right here in the front. Yeah, right there. So... So right there in your pocket, there's a pen and, and uh, there's a Bible there. Um, awesome. And basically, this is, this is the thing. The thing is, the reason why we spend time in, and, and, and SOAP just is an acronym that means Scripture, Observation, O is Observation, A is Application, P is Prayer. And so what does it look like for us to go through the Scriptures in light in, in light of the tragedies and the senselessness and, and, and the, the distrust and the hurt and the pain that's going on in our culture and our society today, how do we respond? And see, what I realize is that there's a lot of anger right now in our country, around the world. Matter of fact, I'd even say that there's a lot of anger right now in this room. And I'd, I'd like to encourage us and say that Anger is not a fruit of the Spirit. You know why? Because we have a greater hope. We're not a people without hope. And so when we lose hope, we become angry. We become bitter. And I, I, I want to encourage us that we need to hear God's voice. We need to hear Him speak. We, we need to cry out to God so that He would be able to minister to our heart and to open up. And I, I just want to, um, if you wouldn't mind, we're going to start with um, a passage of Scripture in uh, Chronicles. Right after Kings, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, comes Chronicles, and then uh, 2 Chronicles. Uh, there should be the verses up there. No, the verse is soaping. Help her out, Norma. Um, Second Chronicles, chapter 7, and I believe is verse 14. Okay, you got the verses. All right. I'm just going to read them quickly, and then I'm going to give you a moment there so that you could spend a little time and just ask God. This is what the soap is. That you, you take a passage, and you ask God, okay, what, what jumps out at you in the text? What, what word, what phrase? Because that is how 
you are able to begin to hear God's voice. Not only do, I, do we as a community want to hear God's voice, I want you to encounter God. And you and I encounter God through His Word, through His spoken Word. And also the fact is that, that when you, we hear and we encounter Him, He then stirs our heart where we can then share those things that God has given us with others. That's how you and I impact our communities, our families, our neighborhoods, our city, and our nation for Jesus. By hearing God's voice, encountering Him, and allowing Him to speak through the, the minutia of our lives, through the circumstances of our lives, through the pain and the sorrow, through, through the difficulties that go on. And, and this is what I, was, I felt compelled by. Verse 14, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, it says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. And I want you to consider, it says that if, it says if. And I, I want you to see that the, there is, God lays out not only in this passage, we're going to talk about some other ones, that the burden responsibility, he doesn't lay on a culture, a society that is far from God. He says, if my people... Those, those who have, have come to God, those who have been surrendered their lives to Jesus and have allowed him to, to save them and deliver them and heal them and the Holy Spirit dwells in us. God, the Word of God puts the burden of responsibility, I believe, and, and, and you read this, the passage, on us as a community of faith, as the church of Jesus Christ when we see the tragedies, when we see the injustice, when we see the pain, when we see people in our neighborhoods who are suffering and hurting, that we would take the initiative. See, that's where I believe responsibility is, taking the initiative. And I, I just, I am convinced, Eddie's convinced, I'm not saying you're convinced, but I'm saying Eddie's convinced that the church has been asleep for way too long and that we need to pray and ask God to awaken in us. Because we need to ask God, Lord, break our hearts, wreck our hearts over the things that wreck your heart. And I'm, I, I am praying desperately that God will not, not just new hope, but I'm, I'm talking about the body of Christ, that there, there would be such, such an anguish in our heart over all the things that are going on and that in our culture and society that we want to stand up and do something. But we have to align our heart with His. See, because this is what I'm absolutely convinced that God is here, and God knows. He knows, and he is able. Because to be perfectly honest, I feel overwhelmed. I feel overwhelmed over the issues and all the, the hurt and the, the hatred and the distrust that is going on is beyond my ability. And so what ends up happening, I have a natural tendency to shut down. But see, when we read the book, we see God is, God is calling us to rise. We read through the passage here. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and then pray and Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I want you to consider that, you know, finger pointing never works. Well, it's this one's fault, that one's fault. You know, it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, those people. It's the government. It's, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, an, does finger pointing ever work? 
Does continuing to promote and, and hatred and violence, has that ever worked for us? Where in human history, I mean, if we just use our brain for a second, where has it ever worked? It never works. Matter of fact, what we've seen through redemptive history is that when God's people realize that we, we're in this world, we're part of the culture and society, and you and I have the opportunity to be a blessing or a curse. To be part of the, the, to be a part of the healing process, to be a part of the, um, to bringing hope, or we could be a part of the problem. It's always before us. In marriages, in our relationship with our children, our neighbors, our co-workers. And I believe that there's an opportunity for you and me that I believe is this humbling aspect is that ultimately we need to come before a holy God and say, Lord, we have sinned. We need to repent. We have sat in the sidelines way too long. We have Jesus Christ who came and he rescued and he healed us and he set us free. And he gave us the power through his Holy Spirit to build bridges of hope. And maybe because we've allowed the circumstances of the world, because we're so consumed with the things of this life that we've just pushed it off. You know, our heart, the Bible says that our, if one person hurts, we should all hurt. I look at our communities and specifically I look, I look at our African American community and I tell you there is a lot of pain and a lot of distrust. And it's everywhere. I read a survey uh, once that, um, that nobody really has any confidence in our Congress. And uh, we've lost confidence in our leaders. We've lost confidence in our society. We've lost, and the church is no different. We've lost confidence in our pastors. We've lost confidence in our elders and our leaders. And that has built an unbelieving swell of disappointment. And we're seeing the brunt of it. And I'm concerned. I'm concerned that if we as God's people don't rise to the occasion, it's going to continue to get worse and worse. And it's not going to be a neighborhood or a city far from here. It's going to continue to grow in this trust. And it's not like we haven't seen in our own history before. And the Lord has given us one side to choose, his side his side, and to love him and to love people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask us to do something that I know is going to make us very uncomfortable. I know that, um, I know that uh, many, many here are just, uh, you know, and I, I just, I, I want to encourage you and, and implore you that the hour is so desperate and the need so great that we, we have to seek God for the answer. We have to seek God for what he would have us to do. Let me um, read another passive scripture just so that comes from uh, Joel. Joel chapter 2. Verse 12, it says, Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts and not your garment. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. 
You know, we all, we all know, that we all know, and I think we could pretty much agree that all governments are fallible. That society is fallen. And that life isn't fair. We all know that. And in the midst of that, you and I have this unbelievable commission from God to be ministers of reconciliation, to be ambassadors for Christ, to be the hands and feet of Christ, to bring healing and hope, to be the light of God in the midst of the darkness in our culture and society, to have the courage and the boldness of God to walk into the most broken places in our culture and in our society and to bring healing and hope. And I believe we need it. This is, what I, this is why I... This is not the America that I want to leave my children's children. We're better than that. We have proven over the last 240-odd years that our unity together has made us strong, that our unity together has allowed us to make a difference in the world and in generations and in cultures. Our unity that transcends culture and ethnicity and, and whether we're rich or poor, educated or uneducated, is what God has done in this country and allowed us to be able to be a blessing. And right now the enemy is having his day, bringing division. We are more divided as a nation, I believe, than ever before. There's one race, the human race. But we need to demonstrate that in deeds. We need to show that, that with one voice and one nation under God, that we can rise above and not allow the enemy and the powers and the principalities and the rules of this dark age to continue to tear us apart. We need to hear his voice. I, I wish I had a strategy. I wish I had a plan. I, I, I wish I, I don't. I come here broken and flawed and saying, I don't know. But what I do know is the one who does. I do know the one who can heal. I know the one who can restore. I know the one that who can save. I know the one who can walk on water. I know the one who can calm the sea with his voice. I know the one who can raise the dead. I know the one who can make dry bones live. I know the one. And that's the reason why there isn't anything that draws God's presence and God's power is that when God's people humble themselves, when we repent and we turn, and we just need to pray. And so I'm going to ask us to stand. And I'm, uh, listen, I, I know right now, I'm, I'm going to ask my forgiveness up front and apologies to all of my, my, my introverts here who are just going to just go, oh, are you kidding me, Eddie? And as we looked at these two paths of scriptures, I'm, I'm going to ask you to get into groups of three, four, five people, and I know, I know, but I just feel that the hour is that desperate. I think doing nothing is not working. I think believing that somehow that it's, it's just going to get better tomorrow is, is a lie. And I believe we just need to pray. We need to pray that God would stir the church, that we would awaken to God's call, 
We pray for our nation that we would not allow the powers and the principalities and the devil himself to continue to rip us apart. We need to pray for a world that has gone so self-absorbed that we can't think of anybody else. And so if you just, just take just a few minutes, just move around those seats, just get in groups of threes, fours, five, whatever, just move around. And I just want you to get there and pray. I know it's awkward. I know it's awkward. But it's the only way we're going to break the powers and the principalities. It's the only way that we're going to be able to, to live this life that God's called us to. And just pray. Let's just seek God together. There's any, if you guys see each other alone, let's just kind of get. I can't see back there.
Hallelujah. You know, it's amazing how um, and we look at the <clears throat> Corinthians um, and uh, Chronicles and how, what does it mean to humble ourselves? What does it mean? And I, I've, I've had a, um, uh, which I've, I've used in the, in the past, I have these Ten Commandments of Repentance. And I wanted to do is I wanted to challenge us as a community of faith to consider going through these. And I, listen, if, I, I totally understand if, you know, say, Eddie, listen, I'm not really there, or this, that, and that's okay. I wouldn't want you to just to kind of go through them. But I, I'm going to ask us, to go through these Ten Commandments of Repentance together and um, actually as a community we're going to repeat them together. And, uh, and if you don't feel like it, it's okay. I mean, I'm not trying to muscle anything. I, I have no agenda. Um, my agenda, uh, if, if I have any, is to be able to us to point to Jesus in the midst of our calamity, in the midst of our pain, in the midst of, you know, our, our country, our community, our city who's at war. And um, whether it's um, in our neighborhoods, the streets, the drugs, the, the shootings, um, the rapes, the homicides, I, it, is, it is just terrible. And um, you include all the wars and the sickness and disease on top of that, we are, we are incapable and we need a holy God. And... Um, He, these are the Ten Commandments. I mean, if, if just to allow God to say, okay, Lord, I want to surrender to you and allow you to do what you want to do. As the, John the Baptist says, I need to decrease so that Christ may increase. And that rem reminds us that we need to move out of the way. And I believe this is probably one of the key aspects of doing that. And so... Um, you guys could just say along with me. The first one, it says, We have not loved you with all our heart and soul and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have been deaf to your call to serve. We have been unfaithful, proud, and hypocritical. We have been self-centered, and have taken advantage of others. We have been envious of those more fortunate than ourselves. We have loved worldly goods and comfort too much. We have been dishonest in daily life and work. We have neglected prayer and worship. We have failed to commend the faith that is in us. We have been blind to human need and suffering and indifference to injustice and cruelty. We have thought uncharitable about others. We have been prejudiced towards those who differ from us. We have washed, wasted, and polluted your creation and lack concern for those who come after us. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said and in the wrong we have done and in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance. We have sinned in weakness. We have sinned through our own deliberate faults. We are truly sorry. We repent and turn to you. Forgive us for our Savior Christ's sake and renew our lives to the glory of your name. Amen. Um, I'm a big fan of... St. Francis of Assisi, and uh, I, I go through a lot of his readings. And he has a prayer, which I, I just uh, thought was uh, been very powerful in my own life, and just kind of wanted to share that. 
And this is St. This is Francis' uh, prayer. He says, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in the dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Um, I wanted to you know, one of the things that we see throughout scripture is that God calls these sacred assemblies and I feel that's exactly what God is doing right now in our midst and I'm praying that it will light a fire not only in us but in the body of Christ here in our locality and around the world. And I, there is no doubt in my mind that a key is that what does it look like for us to fast? And I'm, my, my one challenge today is to, to ask you guys to fast and to continue praying, not just for today. This, this was just, I hope, a catalyst so that we would be praying We'd be praying for our leaders, as the Bible says, that we'd be praying for our neighbors, as the Bible says. We'd be praying for those who are far from God, who don't believe what we believe. We'd be praying for, for those who don't even like us, that we would do good to those who hate us, show kindness to those who have want nothing to do with us, but that our lifestyle and our love for one another would be so such a powerful witness to the world as God's people awaken to the call that he's called us to we have we have an opportunity in this generation to leave a legacy for the next for our children's children and I'm not I am convinced that what we are doing so far is not measuring up to the need that's out there and yes, you know, we feed the homeless, we clothe the naked, we take care of widows and orphans. We, we have many, many things here at New Hope. I, amazing. We help families with their paying their utilities and their water bill and their electric when, when uh, they get their shutoff notices. And, you know, we go and visit the seniors who are there. We, I mean, it just, it's endless. You can just look in that weekend program. And it's not because we're not busy, and I'm not saying that. I'm not asking you to add something else. I think the key for us is saying, okay, Lord, what would you have us do today? Not stop what we're doing already, but, Lord, what is it? I can't, I can't express to you how much a kind word, a hug, an affirmation, that we speak into other people's lives. Right now, we're sitting in a room full of so many different cultures. There's probably about 12, 14 different nationalities in this room. You and I represent the hope to our neighborhoods, our community, our city, and the world. Jesus took 12 men, and they radically impacted their world. There's more than 12 people in this room. Imagine what we could do together. Imagine what we could do to impact the world around us. I'm saying you're that valuable. And this is why we come humbly before him, because now we become tools in the master's hand. Now you and I have an opportunity to be a blessing and I just want you to kind of think through that. I have one last passage. When we think about a fast in Isaiah chapter 58, 
I can't encourage you to write these scripture passages down and spend some time during the week and just allow the Word of God to soak and soak into your life. Uh, because the more that we have the Word of God in us, the more it's going to bring transformation in, in all our lives. Verse fi uh, 5, Isaiah 58, verse 5 says, Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for a man to humble himself? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying on sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fast I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke. To set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe him and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. When your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear, then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and the malicious talk, and if you spend yourself in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness, and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose water never fails. Right now there is just An opportunity, I believe, for us. And um, I pray that we would seize the moment. I believe God's heart is aching over the pain and the lost and so much death that is going on in our midst. And for the communities that are in our own nations that are warring, and in pain, and in hurt, and in sorrow. And I know it's hard to empathize with people that we don't know. I know it's hard to put ourselves in other people's shoes. This is what the gospel does for us. The gospel allows you and me to see that every man, woman, and child as a human being in pain, in sorrow, and suffering. And every side has a cause. Every side has pain. Every side has injury. Every side has hurt and loss and abuse and violation. And I am convinced that as a community of faith, God isn't calling us to pick sides. God is calling us to bring healing. God is calling us to bring hope. God is calling us to point people to the one who has the answer. The finger pointing as the word of God says, and I already said the word of God doesn't work. It never has. And you and I are a people that I believe can make a, genera a difference in our generation. I'd like to close, um, so I'll stand. And I'd like just to, I want to pray. I want to pray for us as a people. I want to pray for our nation. Um, I want to pray for the communities in our city, Baton Rouge, Minnesota, Dallas, 
I want to pray for, there is just so much division right now. And there's so much anger. And we need the Spirit of God to bring healing. God's people aren't called to anger. We're called to love and joy and peace, long-suffering, patience, fruits of the Spirit, so that you and I could be the hands and feet of God, that you and I could be God's hands to be able to see a generation come back to God. And the only unity that could be brought is through God himself. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for every single one of us in this room. I thank you, Lord, that, Father, you have given us your son, and, Father, he loved us so much that he gave himself, Lord, to us so that we could have him, and he died on a cross, and he experienced the ultimate injustice, the ultimate pain, the ultimate suffering, Lord, in this life so that we could be rescued, every man, woman, and child. And I pray, Father God, for healing of the nations. I pray, Father God, Lord, for, Father, our fellow countrymen around, Father, these states, Lord, that are in so much pain and so much suffering and there's so much violence, Lord God. And we pray, Father, your peace. We pray, Father, your comfort. We pray, Father, for the families that have lost loved ones, Lord. And we pray, Father, that you would, Father, comfort them. And, Father, that somehow, supernaturally, O oh God, that you would draw near to them and give them a greater hope and give them a greater peace in this life. Father, we pray, Father, for our leaders. We pray, Father, for our government. We pray, Father, for our nation, O oh God. Father, Lord, that we would all surrender and heal and turn our hearts back to you. Lord, that we would actually begin to live out the words of our forefathers, Lord. Father, that we are one nation under God, that all men are created equal. Lord, that, and that has been paid for time and time again by so many of our, our fellow citizens who have gone to foreign battlefields around the world and those here, Lord, even in our own country, Lord, who have wake up every morning and put themselves in harm's way, Lord. And freedom always comes with a cost. Justice comes with a cost. And I thank you, Lord, for the many who have been able to rise above, Lord, the pain, the sorrow, the hurt, those who are able, Lord, to forgive, those who are able to love, those who are able, Lord, to trust you, Lord, to bring the ultimate justice. Father, that we realize, Lord, that you alone, Lord, Father, are the righteous one to judge. And so help us, help us to be like your son. Help us to be a community of faith that's going to love people, love our city. Father, that, Father, even as our, our mission statement has said for the last 12 years, Lord, that, Father, that you are going to use us to tear down the barriers that would separate us. And so, Lord, help us to be one people under your sovereign grace. Help us to be a catalyst, not only in our families, but in our community, Lord. Father, where we're going to see such a great awakening and such a great revival and we're going to see families unified. We're going to see marriages healed. We're going to see, Father, people come together from all cultures and all nationalities, Lord, with one voice. Because your word promises it, that every tongue and every nation and every tribe is going to gather one day and every knee is going to bend and we are going to worship him. And I pray, Father, that you would allow us to begin to experience that here. Help us to be your your men, your women, your children, this life, to be your hands and feet, to be your light in the darkness. Father, help us not to shy away from the call. We ask this all in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. God bless you. Have a...
wonderful, awesome day.